a holiday till you're laying underneath your vehicle in a commercial shopping market parking lot. Oh. Well, we're here. Everything in the engine on this thing looks pretty good. It definitely was running when it was scrapped because you can see how the roof was crushed right in. It's got a weird structural member right in the middle. I'm kind of impressed it's done as well as it has. In a rollover, that would be my concern. Although the drivers and passenger seats, not a whole lot of space there. I feel bad for the people that win this when it went. It has the whole engine. I just now need to see if there's anything worth grabbing with my limited tools. Because the other challenge is this thing comes down and is affecting the seats, which I need to remove to get into the engine compartment. If I had a Sawzall, I could do it. So here's part of it. The driver's side, you can see there's the oil dipstick. There's where you fill the oil. Uh, there's fuel lines, a bunch of vacuum lines. The transmission dipstick is right there. One of the sensors I need is right in there. And then the other things I need are from that side. And I don't think, I don't think that's gonna be an easy way in. Well, maybe this one we'll just have to uh, count as a write-off. <laughs> that's your uh, dad joke for the day. Anyways, yeah, sad, because that engine is probably a fully functioning running engine because it would have been scrapped because of the accident, not because of the van breaking down. I just wish I could figure out this problem with the knock sensor. I have everything I need to fix it, but it just didn't get fixed. It wasn't better when I ran a new shielded wire, I replaced the knock sensor. I got that connector though, that might be enough to do it. Anyway. Okay, so we stopped at a Toyota dealership and talked with their like shop foreman and he thinks that's something that I already checked but we're gonna do it anyway. It's a piece I can't find. Like a bit? Yeah. It's the other extension. Is it down there? Oh, down in the front? Yeah. No. That's a critical piece of the whole thing. Stop recording. One eternity later. You're on. Okay. So the tool I was looking for, I had stuck in my tool bag because I had to carry it into the auto wrecker. I found it nonetheless. You don't need coveralls for this? I do. Oh, you do? The, okay. Yeah, gas is going to come out. I see. Oh yeah, I need to burp the tank. Otherwise, it's going to spew gas all over me. You just take the cap off, that's it, to yeah. burp it? Also, we're in the O'Reilly's parking lot, and I wasn't going to do this here, but there's someone who's over there doing their whole front suspension, so I thought I might as well just get it over and done with. It's also relatively easy to get to, so you might as well just do it. <laughs> this is a clown show. Is this exciting for you? Make you get in these. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, we'll take these off. My hair will probably get dirty. This extension. So Marilyn refers to this as spaghetti noodle. Although it's been far more of a noodle than that before. And I think I need 12, but we'll take 14 with me just to be sure. Pays to have your own tools with you. Okay, I'm crawling underneath. Where do you go under the hood part? Right, or right, right there? Right below oh, here. Right. Like it's up underneath. Not zero. Um, shoot. Noodle is not going to work on that one. I'm going to need a wrench. So, this 
is the fuel filter. I need to pull it off. It is going to leak a bit of gas, but it shouldn't be very much. Always burp the tank, otherwise pressure just spews the gas out. But I'm not a mechanic. No, don't trust what I say. Also, don't do work on your own vehicle. It's a royal pain in the rear. We just don't want to wait for the dealership, which is going to be a couple days. I'm going to pass this back to Marilyn. holiday until you're laying underneath your vehicle in a commercial shopping market parking lot. Now here, without a jack, is where I have to do my gymnastics. Is it going to spray in your face? I hope not. Oh! Fuck sucker. Get in your Get face. Me a wipe. Okay, hold on. <clears throat> Good thing I closed my eyes. Mm -hmm. The old. Thing with the new. Shoot, I didn't look to see which way it was up on that. It gave me the little brass bushings. And these ones will go on the other side. Going around the corner. Like right in between my eyes. Up, up, up but you're filming the bottom, turn the, tilt the camera towards what I'm doing. More and more and more and more. Yeah, there. Okay, let's make sure it fits. Okay. Okay, one in. And the other is in. Can you see this and yeah. this? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now there's a brass bushing on that side. I'm gonna put one on the other side. Oh man, that would be nice if I had a jack. Zip it up. And it's snug, so now we have no more leaking gas. Um, the noodle can't get to this oh. one, so I need to do it with the wrench. Yeah, these wrenches with the ratchet in the end. So, um, let me go wide angle here. This is what I just replaced, the fuel filter. Bottom, there's a banjo at the top. These are called banjo fittings. But yeah, I had to undo it with these two bolts, let it come down, swap it out is relatively easy. But if this, this is the solution, the last four months of our problems are solved. I'm doubtful, but fingers crossed. God. What? Just my fucking finger. So keep recording or what? Uh, no, you're on. You're on? The moment of truth. First, I'm gonna make sure it's not leaking. It's gotta get gas to pump through. Nope, it's dripping gas. Shoot, I already put everything away. Well, no dice. We're now eating avocado with a whole bunch of spices and stuff. Doesn't seem to work. It might also take a little while to settle in. So I'm hoping that maybe by tomorrow things have changed, but I'm not particularly hopeful. I, I kind of felt like the fuel pump couldn't have been it, but I tested it after the fuel filter and the pressure was good. We'll go back to the dealer in the morning and talk to the shop foreman again. He might have other ideas now that that's eliminated. Unfortunately, we're still limping along. I think it still might be the harness problem. 
Anyway, we're going to stay in Flagstaff here at the Walmart tonight. Anytime, I mean. Or yeah, or anytime fitness. I need a shower because I got sprayed with gas in the face. <laughs> so yeah, we'll go to one of those two places and then we're probably going to head to uh, the South Rim and go explore that for a while. Meander our way down Prescott Valley, Preston Valley. I can't remember. Anyways, there's another Previa at another wrecker there, so we might go look at that as well. The grand tour of auto wreckers. Probably start making dinner, I don't know, in an hour or so. Should I pull that chicken out then? Yeah. yeah. Alrighty, well, we'll catch you at dinner time. Can I move this bag up here? Uh, yep. So this is the preparatory process to go to Anytime Fitness. It's shower time. Just getting ready to go in. Seems quiet, but you never know. Are you ready? I'm ready. Ready when you are. Locked. And we're ready to go. Here we are. I'm going to give you a tour before we get all changed. And the shower is huge. Usually their facilities are a little bit bigger and nicer, but this is still great. Anyways. Well, things turned out a little differently than we expected. We're actually watching some Texans. Oh, I'm going to turn this around. This is... You missed it. I think I did. Oh, oh no. Maybe Dad's going to do it now. Oh, they're putting their hats away now. Mm. Anyways, there was he was like trying to pose all sexy with his cowboy hat on. And... Yeah, oh, no, no, no. Dad's going up yet. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I don't think he'll do it as good of a job as... as um... No, yeah, he had his leg up and was posing hard. Anyway, um, now they're going to put their cowboy hats back in the truck. But no, last night turned into a big shit show. We thought we could come up and find some places to park. Well, it goes even before that. We were originally going to go to that one place, and then we went down that road. We traveled an hour down. Oh, yeah, yeah. find that was closed. That's uh, so what I was just going to explain. Oh, okay. I thought yeah. you were talking about the second one. Yeah, no, no. So we were going to camp. It turns out it was reservation and didn't realize that you need permit to do that. So when we got to the road to pull into it, it's kind of up on the very far east upper side, almost a page. There was a sign saying, no trespassing, you need a permit. Well, at this point of the day, I think it was like six o'clock. There's no way we're going to get a permit. So then we decided to come down and camp in the Kaibab, I think it's pronounced, National Forest, which is just up against Grand Canyon National Park. And we get there and we were going to camp at this one part where there was washrooms. You have to go into the park and then kind of come out halfway through. And it was still snowed in, even though someone on Iowerlander said they were there two weeks, weeks ago. ago. But or... didn't they say they just got hit hard with a snowstorm or something? Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't seem like they're hit that hard. Either way, at that entrance, there was like four feet of snow and there's no way we we're going to get in there. So we ended up continuing through to the west side of the park gate. Found a place to stay where there was like a, a park with a washroom and then we drove down a fire road to stay for the night. We've just driven back into the park. We're going to make some breakfast while we look at this incredible view. And let me tell you, it is unreal. 
This is called Duck on a Rock Viewpoint, I think. I'm not sure why. I don't see any ducks that look like they're on I'm a rock. I'm calling that little peak over there. That does not look like a duck. It looks, looks more like, like a... a nipple. <laughs> yeah, it does. So, yeah, we're going to set the back up into seats and make breakfast. I think we're doing... Pancakes. Santa Cake in a pan. Banana cookies. So it'll be a great place to just chill and enjoy the scenery. The one thing I've noticed between North Rim and South Rim... North Rim is very undeveloped. You can kind of drive out to the the cliff's edge. On the South Rim, everything is commercialized. If it's not the National Park, then the reservations have things set up. I, I don't know what the cost is. It might still be really, really reasonable. I'm going to guess that it is. Look at them. I mean, they might switch Oh, yeah, now. he's going to do it again. Oh, no, he's driving away. Oh, dang. Anyway, he was taking a picture of him in his truck with the door open, his cowboy hat on, and yeah, kind of funny. Must be a new truck as well. On the reservations, I don't know what the price is. I do think it's actually pretty reasonable, but I do think you also have to plan ahead. Did you, did you also talk about the camping site that was supposedly first come first serve oh, and then it was also full? Not yet. So yeah, it's it's supposed to be winter, quiet time here. And uh, there was a first come first serve campsite that's supposed to open in April on the east end of the park. And when we got there, it's closed for winter. And so I don't know why they would say April and not actually have a date. So then we decided to go to the other one on the west side of the park and it was sold out. And it's like, if your campground is selling out, why aren't you opening the other campground? Anyways, accessibility I find in parks is just getting more and more difficult and expensive. Like it's $35 US just to drive into the park, which, you know, we don't have a problem with at all. But there's a lot of people who probably need some nature and to enjoy this scenery. scenery. And 35 bucks that's a pretty big price tag for some people. So, yeah, I kind of definitely feel like outdoors is becoming a little bit for the elite if cost is an issue hit the north rim because the north rim has like overlanding stuff you can drive right out to it the... well at least when we were there in pre-covid i don't know 2019 still though that was like in august like it was like august 5th or yeah, august yeah. 6th so it was like in the heat of the summer in the middle of everything and it was totally reasonable. There wasn't people everywhere. We really, really enjoyed the North Rim a lot more. I'd like to do North Rim to South Rim and back. Probably not going to happen in a day. It's a marathon and a half. I think it's about 40 or 50 miles round trip. Are there people that are, allowed, that are allowed to like live down there? Oh, I don't know. You can't live in the parks. I think some of the indigenous tribes can yeah. and maybe do. But there's also, it's not particularly hospitable down there. Hmm. I do know that people raft the Colorado all the time. Interesting. And so you can do that trip where you drop in after Lake Mead. Anyway, you drop in there just after the dam and you can boat the whole way down. Lake Mead, Hoover Dam. Wouldn't that be fun? Lake Mead, Hoover Dam. Forget it, Bill Cole. Hoover <laughs> Dam. Yeah, that being said, we're going to get to breakfast because not only am I hungry, but more importantly, she's hungry. So That's what really matters. Yep.